Okay, everyone, today is all about Newcastle. I've had this request time and time and time again, but Newcastle are hot at the moment. They've kind of now, I think, end of last season, they kind of just did enough to make sure they gained enough points to get out of the Premier League. And over the summer, obviously, Eddie Howe has implemented what he believes is the way forward for Newcastle United. So in today's video, we're going to show you the 4-3-3, how it sets up. We'll go through the team instructions, the player instructions, opposition instructions, any little tweaks that you might have to do as well during games to get the best out of this tactic. And as always, for you Patreons only, links now over in the Patreon. Go across there and you can have the download for free. Anyone else who wants the download for free, Patreon links down in the description. But I will go through it step by step so everyone could follow along and put this tactic into FM. And I think if I had a stronger midfield we would have been absolutely flying with this tactic. All right, guys, let's get into it. Smash a like on today's video. Let me know down in the comments which tactic you would like me to cover on Monday. So this is coming out Friday morning. So I've only got a two, couple of days. So by all means, get down in the comments and let me know straight away. All right, guys, let's go check out the tactic. Okay, so here we are, the 4-3-3. And we're going to call it Howard's Intensity because his motto phrase at the moment that I believe he's got at the changing rooms inside like the home stadium at St. James's Park and at the training ground is our identity is intensity. Now, what Newcastle have managed to do over the last few weeks is get some valuable games. Now, they don't really heavy on possession or positional play. A lot of success they've got over the, some of the big teams as well. They, even though they lost against Liverpool, they quite, quite, did quite well. It was not so much counter-attacking but just exploiting areas with a few little direct passes into channels, getting players like Almiron and Maximum when he was fit. Callum, uh, obviously Callum Wilson's good at working the channels. And then you've got the runners, then they squeeze up the pitch. You've got runners like Longstaff, Bruno Gamares, Joe Linton, Joe Willock, all very capable athletic midfielders to cause a little bit of chaos. They invite a press from the centre-halves and then they often pounce when balls have gone out wide or gone into a DM. So we've got a few little opposition instructions to set up that way. There's sometimes a high press, there's sometimes a mid press. We've started with a high press in here. They do like the centre-halves and the goalkeeper to have the ball, but as I said, the moment it goes into a DM, sometimes goes out to full-backs as well. They'll go and hunt. They go and hunt in packs in twos and threes. The midfield balance was quite difficult, in particular the DM role, which at the moment I've had John Joe Shelby in there because we've played about 10-11 games. But we're looking at what Bruno Gamara has done. If you're interested, let me know. I've had a few things with him. Obviously, the deep line playmaker in there does suit his natural uh, attributes. However, I don't think he quite covers that because he does like to get forward. There is a few heat maps that I'll show you against a couple of the last few games. I'll put them up now for you. He does. He is always the furthest City midfielder. However, he does like to get in around the penalty box, scored a couple of good goals. He does like to dribble with the ball and drive. So I was really unsure of what to go with. So in the end, we've just gone for a DN on support. But if you're interested, no, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What is Bruno Gamares in terms of his current role at Newcastle? Okay, so here we go. We'll go through the player instructions first and then go through the team instructions and a few of the little bits and bobs. We'll maybe show you a few clips at the end. So, first of all, goalkeeper. Let's get him in. He's out injured at the moment for me. But it has been Nick Pope. We've just got him on a goalkeeper on defend. I'm not asking him to try and do anything fancy. He's not great with his kicking. He does kind of kick and try and work channels, try and turn teams over. So we've just got him as a goalkeeper. Right back. Has obviously been Kieran Trippier. He did his cruciate ligaments for me a couple of weeks ago. So I've been without him. But I've got him as a wing back on support. No player instructions. Fabian Scher is the only one out of the two. I've got a ball playing defender on defend. I've got him as a ball player because he's very, very good at clipping balls into the channel. Often it'll go out to the fullbacks. It'll go into midfield. It'll get it off the goalkeeper. And he'll often, if there's the opportunity to do it, he will hit a, sp he will hit a channel preferably this right one here that likes to clip a ball basically they'll clip a ball over get Almiron who's a willing runner to run in and then once they're running and have turned the defense over they'll squeeze up the pitch Fabian shares brilliant with the ball at his feet so he's normally the one that does that the left hand side is Botman I've just put that as a central defender just so we have a little bit of a balance his long passes were not nowhere near as, as much as what Shaz is so I've just put him as a central defender on defend Left back's an interesting one because Dan Burns been playing there recently and he's not, you know, he's not a no-nonsense fullback. He likes to get on the ball and play a little bit. So I put him as a fullback on support. Obviously, target has come there as well, but they don't ask a great deal from the fullbacks. They kind of get up and support. They occasionally make runs. You know, Kieran Trippier is not bombing past Almiron at every opportunity. He likes to hold back, helps the support, sometimes even cross from deep as well. 
into the middle of midfield. We've got the middle three. We've got the DM. We've at the moment, I'm kind of what I'm seeing in the match engine. I think the DM on support suits Bruno Gamares, and we can also change a few of his player instructions as well. So as you can see, I'm asking him to take more risks because he does like to get on the ball and play a little bit. We're asking him to dribble more because he does like to pr carry the ball through midfield. And I'm also asking him to tackle harder because that is very key for these midfield three. On the left-hand side, I have generally played Joe Linton. However, his fitness levels, I don't know if it's because I'm asking him to do too much running. Look at his value, by the way. 45 to 6, 56 million pounds. Um, but he does end up having to get rotated a lot because of his general fitness. So, we've got Joe Linton in there as a ball-winning midfield. I'm asking you to mark tight and obviously tackle harder. The reason why I've done that is because of the kind of what he contributes to the team. He's not much of a dribbler. He does carry the ball sometimes. But I think his main positive sort of like improvement over the last year has obviously been his positional change. But also when the other team have got the ball and how hard he works. So, we've got him as a ball-winning midfielder on support, not defend. Because we do want him to go out engage a little bit, he gets into the penalty area sometimes and that's what you get with a ball one in midfield and support. And on the right, you're looking at a long staff, you're looking sometimes at Bruno Gamares, I imagine that may happen at some point now. Shelby's fit, he may go and sit in a deeper in, in a deeper midfield spot. In particular, when they may be playing against a team with a low block, they might want Joe Jonjo on the ball, who's a little bit better. Move Bruno Gamares up into midfield because he can do that eight role, no problem. Ball, box to box midfielder. It could be Joe Willock. I do like Joe Willock playing for Newcastle. I've asked him to get further forward, tackle harder, and mark tighter. We want those three to be intense in that midfield. Three tremendous athletes. The only thing that I've struggled with is I think they're not really regarded like Sean Langstaff is okay. Attribute wise, technicals are, are not great. Same with Joe Linton, he's okay. And also the other one, uh, Joe Willock, once again, is pretty average. So it's kind of cost us a little bit. I think if I was doing this as a save, upgrading the midfield in terms of quality and backups. Backups have been the key. When St. Maximum and Almiron have needed to rest it, we're calling on Ryan Fraser and Murphy. So that's a little bit of a drop-off. On the right-hand side is the Almiron role. Tackle harder, mark tighter for him. Inverted winger on support. And on the left-hand side, Alan St. Maximan, we're asking him to take more risks and stay wider because I want him to open out the play. He does like to hug the touchline to start with and then cut in. He does often open it out for us a little bit because we've got a, play, a team instruction in there that we've altered. And then pressing forward on attack, we've got Alexander Isaac playing there at the moment. Callum Wilson can do it, but we're obviously going with Isaac because he's awesome in the game. He scored nine Premier League goals in 13 games for us. That is the player instructions. Moving over to the team instructions, mentality we're asking for positive. I did have it on balance, but then I thought Newcastle do do riskier balls. They clip balls into channels, so I'm asking them to be positive with it. In possession, I've changed over the 10 games. We've been a little bit up, and I've kind of watched a couple of Newcastle highlights. I watched the Newcastle highlights against Spurs again, just to see if we could incorporate the press a little bit. It does help us in transitions in particular, that if we have a narrow shape, we're less open and then we won't hopefully get hit as much on the transition. And that's worked really well. Approach play, pass into space because we want St. Maximum. We want Wilson, Isaac, um, even the central midfielders run onto balls. Almiron, willing runners to hit channels. I've put slightly shorter because what I did was we started on more, slightly more direct. And that just meant we were doing it too often. Our percent numbers, percent pass, pose, our, possession, our possession numbers were way too Low. We were talking at around 30%. That has helped because they do like to keep it. They like to get the ball into Gamaris. They like to get the ball to Trippium, to Shan. They work it, the patient. Dan Byrne at left back, they work it. They try and get the balls into set maximum when they can. Get the balls into the feet of the strikers. So it's not just always clearing it long. But we just get that nice little balance now with passing to space and passing is directly slightly shorter. Tempo is higher. Key for Newcastle United. There's a word I think JJ Bull used on T4 in the week is chaos. They like chaos, they like loads of energy. They're trying to outrun teams, outpower teams. And at the moment, it's working quite well. So we've obviously got that on higher. Hit crosses early. We've got Kieran Chip here. We've got Bolt. You know, people like uh, Callum Wilson thrive off balls in the box as well. Obviously, Isaac's good in the air on FM as well. Um, a lot of goals have come from St. Maximum. Balls coming from that left-hand side. Elmiran coming on the right. It's other way, balls coming from the right-hand side and someone coming at the back stick. So let's get the ball in the box as much as we can, which I think is quite good because a lot of tactics at the moment and you know, all these positional play tactics, tiki-taka tactics, are always work the ball into the box. It's something a little bit different. 
We're playing for set pieces because Newcastle kind of do that. They want to work it and get into areas. Can they get a free kick in around the 18? Get the big boys up. You remember they've got players like Linton as well for midfield. Langstaff's quite big for two centre-halves. If Dan Burns playing, they've got Kieran Trippier. They've got Isak when he's fit. So they've got a lot of people that are good in the air. So play for set pieces is on. In transition, we've just asked for counter-press and counter. They do counter-press when they lose the ball. They have that intense press as soon as they lose it on occasions. And then counter-attack, they do do that by distributing the ball into flanks. Obviously, with players like Almiron, the strikers in Isaac and William, um, and Wilson, Almiron, St. Maximin, they're going to be good on the counter-attack. Goalkeeper distribution is tricky. He does have a high launch, but then he does often get the ball down and when it's opportunity, he plays out, especially with teams playing against the mid-block. He will often play out to the centre half. Remember, Shah, Byrne, um, Botman, and Trippier are all decent on the ball. They also get the ball into Gamares. He sometimes sits in and gets the ball from the goalkeeper. So I've just left that, and we get a nice little row, get a nice little balance with that. It's not ideal, it's not perfect because it's FM, but I think that's kind of as realistic as we possibly can get it. Out of possession, the defensive shape is a high press. Remember, that doesn't mean that they're going and closing down the goalkeeper. We'll look at a few opposition instructions in a minute. But it does try and encourage, with a few opposition encouraged, we're trying to encourage that ball to go into the, either the back line, get it off the goalkeeper, and then we're live when it kind of goes into that holding midfield or a fullback. So we've got high press, high defensive line, step up more. We're not going to drop off, we're going to be brave. And we're trapping outside. So as soon as that ball goes on the outside, we're going to go and press. They often hunt in packs. In particular, the wingers will go and press, the fullbacks will move up, and then one of the wider centre midfielders, a Linton or a Willock, will go and press in there as well with a little bit of backup from the striker who's cutting off the switch pack in. So they kind of force teams into a corner, press, 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 and twos and threes, get the ball back, and then try and create chances from that. Okay, opposition instructions. We're now looking at the trigger press. So... We're not going to trigger press the goalkeeper because they don't do that. They allow the goalkeeper to have the ball and then they let the goalkeeper press, let the goalkeeper kick it out and go to the centre halves. I've left the centre halves off. Newcastle sometimes press the centre half, sometimes they don't. What I want you to do though is do these ones. I've missed the one out here actually. I'll make sure that's in the save file for you. So we're never going to tr trigger press the goalkeeper. We're going to let him have it, let him play. It gives you the opportunity. I think then it does slow the play down a little bit, it means you can team can get the shape ready to press the next one. So we've got a trigger press on the right back and the left back. Remember, we're going to force that play out wide and then we'll get the two wide boys to go press. The full backs move up, central midfielders come in and also the striker coming across as well. So we've got them on. We've also done that for the wing back right and left just in case they're playing a three at the back. And I'll also put it on the DM because when that ball game, man, they did it so well against Casemiro or Fred. I can't remember who it is. Off the top of my head now, they did it well against Spurs as well, where they allowed the centre-halves to have it. And as soon as it goes in, they're off. So that's why we've got that trigger press on. OK, so that's the tactic. The player instructions, team instructions, opposition instructions. As I said, if you are a patron, you could get the downloads for free that you can move straight over. Patreon links are down in the description if you want to go check that out. It's £3 a month. Opportunity to win shirts like this as well. Free monthly giveaways on the channel. Regens in my saves. And obviously you get the tactic files free as well. All right, so here we are. 13 games in. We're on 21 points. Manchester City, as you can see, are absolutely running away with it. 34 points. We're only five points off Liverpool. And we've done all right. I think Newcastle will be happy with seventh. I think we've got better as it's gone on. As we've made the tweaks with a couple of looking at the Bruno Gamares role, changing the uh, press from mid to a high, but having those opposition instructions in as well has worked pretty well. Results-wise... Remember, I don't do sims on this channel because sims are unrealistic and I want to give you a fair evaluation of how this works in FM. Okay, so we've had a couple of tricky results. We did actually play really well against Chelsea. This is where we changed from a high press to a high press and, po and positive mentality. And as you can see, we got beat. Mason Mount scored an absolute worldie. Trippier, as you can see, that's where he got his injury. But the stats, 16 shots, XG of 2.40. We just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Only 37% possession, but we were playing against Chelsea, but was happy how we played. Sometimes when you're playing these better teams as well, they do leave more of a gap. So that little bit of a uh, shorter passing, but with passing to space with the runners does help in those little transitions. The more the other team's got the ball, the more opportunity you've probably got to transition. Remember, we're asking for those central midfielders to really work hard. Uh, Bruno Gomares, Sean Langstaff are really good at breaking up the play. Linton, Willock as well, all really good at uh, sort of like working hard, getting the ball, and then looking to hit the counter with St. Maximan and Almiron. So we were unlucky there. 
We got battered against Manchester City, but we did. We were down to 10 men. Willett got sent off after 27, and they scored on 23, so we did okay. We dropped off. We went on to defensive. We brought the two wingers, kept the wingers' roles and duties the same, but we brought them back. So we played sort of like a four... What was it? Like a 4-1-3-1 with sort of like a staggered midfield. That worked pretty well. But we've picked up good results. Said The last few results have been pretty good. Nottingham Forest 4-2. We scored plenty of goals. Let's go and have a look at the goals from the Nottingham Forest game. Henderson's kicked long. Botman's won the header. And then Joe Lurton's picked it up in midfield. Because we've got a nice little tight midfield there. There's your front three. Almiron getting into a nice little space on support as well. Getting into that little bit of a, little bit of a pocket. We lose the ball. But we're going to get it back. Linton steps in as he does. Manquillo, the right back, into Almiron. And then because we've got St. Maximum on attack, he's going to push that, that centre-half. It looks like a centre-half, but he's going to try and work in channels. They've actually, because we've turned over, we've got the possession, we've got counter-attack on, we've got pass into space on. We can hit that area. St. Maximum's in. Awful FM23 defending. Lovely finish by Alan St. Maximum. Here's the second goal. It is an absolute beauty from Bruno Gamares. But look... We've won it in there, by the way, won it in there. Joe Linton, an absolute superstar. Getting the ball into Isak, who drops off a little bit. Linton on the run. That's a ball winning midfielder on support. I haven't no player instruction for that, but he's kicking on. We've got a break on. Lovely ball into St. Maximum. I'm not quite sure if Joe Linton's got that in his pocket. St. Maximum stands one up. And then Bruno Gamares, edge of the area. Remember, defensive midfielder on support. I think if he was a halfback, he would be back here. But remember, we want Bruno in and around the edge of the area because that's where he's good at. And he's managed to score an absolute brilliant goal to put us back in the lead. And then the third goal, when the ball's headed out, as you can see, we're quite narrow. We're quite narrow. But what I think that does help, if there's a breakdown in possession here, because we're quite narrow, it does help with any transitions, any counter-attacks the opposition gets. So it's really good. Bruno Gamares picks it up. There's Kieran Trippi. He's going to offer, well, not Trippi, but the, the right-back role. He's going to offer some support look in case we need it. So that will often sometimes bring a wing back out. Almeida has decided to clip one into St. Maximan. We get a little bit of luck. We're getting to find a lot of that in FM at the moment. But Wilson honours a sub getting into the penalty area. And then the last one, little clip into space again. We are hitting these little clips when we can. St. Maximum getting in, and there's Almiron. He scored a couple of goals already like that. One against Manchester City, I believe. Literally, like, he chest it in over the line, but he does get into that penalty area. Also, I think because of the narrow width, I think when the ball is on the opposite side, Almiron's position, even though we've not asked him to sit narrow in his play instructions, because we've asked a narrow pitch, it does mean he gets in a little bit better and get it at that back stick, even into the centre of the goal sometimes, depending on the movement and what Isaac and what Williams, uh, Williams Wilson has been doing all right guys that is it hope you enjoy i think this would be a really good fm23 tactic not all the replications are because some things just don't suit the game sometimes however i think this suits fm really really well go and plug it in said patrons you can download it go and head over to the patreon right now link down in the description for that so you can get yourself the tactic move it straight in let me know how you get on and also let me know down in the comments which tactic next week all right guys take care see you later